John, what a great uh, time to have a little catch-up chat. What a week this has been. <laughs> I mean, that's an understatement of the century, mate. <laughs> I mean, yeah. Where do we even start? So, welcome everybody to um, our monthly chat. John and myself have, but um, you're currently in LA, John. Are you? Is that where you are? Yes, sir. Yeah, I'm the other side of the world, really, more or less. I'm in southern Spain. Beautiful day, right in the middle of summer, and I couldn't wait to get online because there's that many theories going around about the recent worldwide events. Um, you're my favorite guy to go to a lot of this because you always have a different way of looking at things and i think vice versa and all some of the things i throw at you you're like huh i hadn't considered that <laughs> rather complimentary so, isn't it <laughs> yeah i think it's good because um i was having a chat with derek johnson the other day and he said one line um he said if you don't trust the man you won't trust the plan and i was like okay but there's too many what ifs and i don't know get this and i understand trying to figure out what's going on obviously we're talking about the shooting that happened, what is it, five days ago now? Is it about that? About a week. When, well, yeah, last Saturday. Yeah. But there's some events that take us into that. And then what's been happening the last 24 and 48 hours in the US is also concerning because that I don't think that really affected us here. I haven't had anybody that's had the same event. So tell us what's been going on with all of this software issues, John. Yeah, I mean, I woke up this morning, you know, I get up early, Dave, six o'clock, because I do a lot of business back in my original um, time zone of the East Coast. So I try to get up like when they do. So I'm usually up around six anyway. And I woke up to a flurry of messages from our team. Uh, you know, a friend in Kentucky, she told me that they can't get the, the gas stations aren't registering the cards, the, they can't get gas that way, they can't... Um, you get the grocery stores are not taking cards. I'm hearing Apple Pay. I'm hearing a lot of flights. American Airlines is not allowing the planes to land. I just had a buddy that left Germany. I was telling you offline yesterday morning. If he waited a day, he'd be in this mess right now. So they're they're getting ready for the cyber attack. They're prepping people for what's coming. Um, there, there's just so much news, David. I mean, it's it's all over the place. I'm going to kind of go in no particular order because we have a history together. But yeah, yeah uh, do it. Vietnam's president uh, was stepping down yesterday. This morning he died. Nguyen Phu Trong, he was the president and uh, financial secretary. He died at 80. He was a communist leader. So you have to start to ask, is that sort of the beginning of the end of communism, right? For Vietnam, China, Taiwan kind of went in my head. Uh, we've got uh, Iraq going on. We've got Sudani. Uh, they're trying to get him out. When I say they, I'm referring to Maliki and all of his goons there in the corrupt parliament we've talked about many times, a holdover from Obama slash Sortero. They're trying mm -hmm. to get him out. They're trying to get the Biden out. The, co the countries copy each other. Why they want Sudani out? Because he's pushing the reforms. They're now having, they've now had their third meeting to get into the World Trade Organization. These are all things that you do when you're getting ready to come back, as you know, on the international stage. He's not going to be able to money launder anymore. So he's panicking. He's freaking out. What Sudani and what I'm hoping Abadi, one of the former prime ministers who learned from his mistakes, is working secretly, we believe, with Sudani to say, hey, go to the border. The military is waiting for you. Tell them what's going on. And they can deal with it and pull these goons out of parliament, do a G.I. Joe, and this thing is done. So we're watching to see about that. Yeah, I mean, this the, the, the Vietnam one's interesting. Here he is. I just want to show people what he actually looks like he doesn't look very sick what's um did they did they give a particular reason why he did die 13 years as general secretary communist party thousands of people are arrested on corruption charges and crack down right so again they're getting ready so when they're moving all of these old die hard um corrupt politicians out of the way mm -hmm. has he died was he killed was he just sort of they've announced he's he's died he is uh, elderly he's 80 like you say john so it's very possible um also there's very strong rumors that biden something is going to be announced very very quickly mm -hmm. about him i'm th i'm expecting that imminently imminently what, because he's been he's been what was it he had a severe dose of covid again was it is that what they said well do you remember david you and i have talked on several shows and offline for i don't know the better part of what nine months a year I, i've lost track where oh. i said they're going to probably remove him due to an undisclosed medical illness yeah, and a yeah. couple of days ago on our telegram we posted from one of our team members who always finds great information, by the way, uh, they showed me that uh, he said, well, I'll step down if doctors say I have an undisclosed illness. Then four hours later, he gets COVID. So the whole thing's a script.
Yeah, I saw an interesting meme, John. It says the shot that was supposed to have killed Trump actually killed Biden mm -hmm. because the ratings have gone through the roof for that. Um, very strange times, but I think you skipped over all of that, the software issues very quickly because... Oh, yeah, go ahead. I, need to, I want to remind the audience that um, Klaus Schwab was saying, it's your thing, but the, the problems that came with COVID are going to be that way till cyber attack hits. Because he's been prepping us for a, a severe cyber attack for a long time. This is why we're saying you got to have cash in the house. If you can't right. pay for your gas, you can't pay for anything because your card isn't working. You need to have cash in the house, guys. We've warned you about this before, so don't be surprised. I don't think we had the similar problems on this side of the Atlantic. I haven't had any issues with my Apple Pay or any of the cards. I'm on a flight currently. I've had three people come and go. Um, and why these airlines are still using and still being slaves to a particular uh, Microsoft software is beyond me. Surely you would have a contingency plan for this sort of thing, especially since what happened during 9-11 when everybody was grounded. And this isn't the first time this has happened where they have had a software glitch that the F FAA have had to step in and say, right, nobody's on, nobody's coming in, nobody's leaving, you're all grounded. So it's. It, I think they're prepping us for organized chaos the scorch and burn as we get closer to eliminating all of these tired old corrupt politicians and making room for this new wave that's coming in. Well, I agree. And let's go back to what you said about cash. Make sure not only have cash, but here in America, have lower denominations, ones and fives. The reason being is that let's say that you go to a farmer's market, right? Uh, for those who live in outskirts of the city or in the country and you have farms, you know, they, they may only take cash or maybe they're only taking cash in some instances, as an example. And if you yeah. gave them $20 and, you know, you wanted to get, I don't know, five apples or something, you don't want to pay $20 for five apples when it only costs is like, you know, three, four dollars. You have mm -hmm. ones and fives, you can give them exact change. It's going to make it easier for them to do business. And maybe they'll even give you a better price for it. Who knows, depending on the, the merchant. Um, and I would not be surprised to see this coming your way over the Atlantic. And also don't forget Starlink satellites have been put in. So what I see happen or what we see happening to be precise is we see the old system coming down and them just overlapping the new system over top of that and being a seamless transition after however many days we're down. I hope so. I mean, these 10 days of darkness, is this what they're talking about? This, this disconnection? Mm -hmm. In all honesty, I'd be I'd quite enjoy it just not being connected because it's <laughs> so hard to keep up now, John. With what's going on, isn't it? People say, "Have you heard about this? You heard about this?" I said, "No." I I just stopped and made a coffee and a sandwich, and now the whole world's moved on because I haven't been online <laughs> for twenty minutes. <laughs> totally, and not to mention that the mental exhaustion of all that takes its toll on you. People don't realize from our vantage point, it absorbing all that information. Your brain can only hold so much, you yeah. know, and it gets to be overkill. So, yeah, I would enjoy the break just to read a book and just chill out for a few days. Yeah, I agree. But I suppose we better talk about um, about the shooting because, sure. you know, well, the people have been asking about it because there's still a lot of confusion about the whole thing that happened. So my take on this, and this is what I've been talking about. I haven't done a lot of shows about it, but when 9-11 happened, I was screaming at the television saying, well, that's a load of BS. Didn't believe it. I didn't believe it when Obama came out and said, we've caught Osama. We've um, mm -hmm. put him on a ship and he was killed in a, a line of duty. And now uh, we chucked his body overboard. Before we had any independent um, scientific evidence, we invited any independent doctors to come and verify that it was actually him. Oh, that's nice of you. Thanks, Obama. You're a star, mate. Yeah, just tell everybody you've been looking for the world's most wanted man. You spent trillions of dollars. And when you do get the body, you chuck it in the ocean before anybody can have a look at it. So that doesn't sound like it's uh, suspicious or anything. No, no, not at all. The, the, what those few, a few funny things that I, I found quite amusing was. And so firstly, a guy getting up on the roof um, with a, a rifle, not in any form of military or police or service personnel uniform. He was just dressed in normal clothing. And apparently, here's my favorite part about that one. Apparently, the roof that he was on, right underneath it, was the police um, command center. Mm -hmm. So it was a tin roof. It wasn't insulated. It wasn't inside a building. There was three floors. It was a very basic tin roof. So you tell me that all those policemen inside the command center didn't hear something going on above us. It's absolutely right. ridiculous. Not so to mention, 
Go ahead. I'm sorry. No, no, no. That was it. No, not to mention, David, you rightly pointed out when we talked the other day, there was people in the crowd for like a period of eight minutes that said, hey, there's a sniper on the roof. Yeah. You know, this, the police ignored them. The Secret Service personnel ignored the crowd saying, what the hell is going on? There's a, there's a guy on the roof with a gun. Literally <laughs> screaming at me. And it's come from so many videos now because it's like whack-a-mole. They're trying to stop all these people putting them up. There's another video. Then somebody copies it and reposts it. They can't. People can see what happened. So obviously, the guy with the gun was allowed to be up there. He was permitted. They knew he was up there. Yeah. Then we have the sniper that's looking straight at him. And I don't know about you, but I know enough about military personnel to know that if you've got your eye in that scope, you do not go, oh, what was that? Let's just have a look. Maybe I can look better without the scope. <laughs> I think he was, uh, I don't even think he was a sniper because he would, there was no way for him to be able to take his mind off the game and, and pull away from the weapon and have a look. That would go against every instinct that he's being trained by the professional Marine Corps or whoever, the military service. So I don't even think that guy was a professional um, hmm. in that field. So that was that one. Then there was, um, then the, what was the next one? Oh yeah, the uh, the, the personnel. His uh, security team, mm -hmm. uh, the woman that couldn't reholster a gun, she looked very nervous. How everybody was out facing him rather than facing away, looking at the shooter. And then another guy said to me, "Well, Mahoney, the reason that all of the Secret Service personnel were looking at Trump is they had confidence in all of the shooters behind him." And I said, "Confidence in all the shooters? Well, if he had confidence in all the shooters and his security team behind, the guy wouldn't be on the roof in the first place, taking several shots, would he now?" Now, I've seen several assassination attempts on the video playback, John, and the first thing that the security team do is they get what looks like a giant pillow. And you can see they're like this with a giant pillow, ballistic bag with Kevlar um, reinforcement, which looks about the same size as a, yeah, a large pillow, what you'd use in football practice, a linebacker hitting a guy on a bag or a professional fighter kicking a guy with a bag. These are Kevlar reinforced security bags none of them were around and i'm sure there's more even more modern tech uh technical stuff like imagine if you opened up an umbrella and just held a ballistic umbrella like that around the uh the vip he was still exposed to headshots for several minutes they stuffed them down on the floor the protocol is look at any assassination attempt by any other president in any other time period First thing they do is grab them, drag them out, put them in the car and get them out of there. That's that's protocol. They don't put them down on the floor and give them a little massage and say, where's his shoes? Oh, you've lost your shoes. Have you seen his shoes? Where's the president's shoes, everybody? The whole thing stinks, mate. So I don't believe I don't believe anything of what the optics are telling us. But the question remains, OK, uh, who authorized it? If that was really an assassination attempt on Trump, uh, who who pulled the trigger to say, okay, go ahead? Because all of his staff were involved in it. A lot of people that were there to protect him let it happen. So there's a big corruption thing there. But you said something very interesting to me. You said, Mahoney, how can a guy that gets an assassination attempt, a bullet whizzes past his ear. Now, a bullet whizzing past and clipping the skin, it would blow your eardrum out that. And at the very least, he wouldn't just go, hmm. Huh. What was that? It's not a bee sting, is it? You right. know, that sort of velocity and it's ripping through the skin. You would, your whole body would go, ah, oh, you would immediately like that. Recoil. Put two hands up. Oh, that's inconvenient. Look, blood. And then where did he go? Where was, where was the president seen? Where was Trump seen later that day? New Jersey. Exactly. So you're in Philadelphia, well, in Pennsylvania. Outside of Again. You get shot, yeah? You need to get your ear ripped off. You get dragged out of there, and you get a fright. But then you think, oh, you know what? I was actually supposed to go to New Jersey today. So, yeah, let's just go to New Jersey. That seems like a good idea. They wouldn't. Now, now before you, you said, what's the medical protocol, John, that you told me? Well, the people that I know have been shot in the past, friends, military people, they say, depending on the wound, of course, obviously, but a situation like that, typically they keep you overnight for observation. So I, I have questions. How how is he shot? And then hours later, getting on his private plane and walking down with a different security team 
he looked fine. He didn't look woozy or anything. Wouldn't you be a little disoriented if you really got shot? It just, it doesn't add up. And then I found out, and before you show the slides, our research team found a very interesting factoid, David, I think you will find intriguing at the say the least. Do you know who funds the Secret Service? What division they're under in the, in the government? Uh, I, no, actually, I don't. It's a good question. Treasury, the Treasury Department. Hmm. Well, it makes sense. They're all getting paid. But, you know, I don't think a lot of the presidents still have a big um, team members from the Secret Service. So the amount you've seen how Trump rolls around the country in his motorcade. Obviously, I think that's all being paid for by his own pocket because, you know, he can afford it. But right. um if they were if they were members, real members of the Secret Service, and there must be way down the list, like, okay, oh God, let's I suppose oh, let's throw Susie a bone because she hasn't worked in months. She's put a few kilos on. She's been sitting around with uh, her girlfriend on the beach in Cancun for a while. So let's give her a bit of work. We'll send her to protect Trump. But um let's give her a gun and a holster that she can't use properly. And um yeah, some sunglasses that keep sort of make it look a little bit intimidating. They were just useless, John, useless. Mm -hmm. And every single military person I've talked to is, is like, what the hell is going on there? It was like it was like a comedy act of of mistakes, bundles and uh, after error after error. So the question remains, was it a real assassination attempt is question number one. Who set it up? Question number two. Was that the real Trump there? Question number three, because I think your points are very valid, buddy. You know, something like that would mentally scar you and you'd be full. You, you saw him when he's fisting his ass. Right. That would fill you so full of adrenaline, it would take you a, a couple of days to come down off it because I guarantee every muscle in his body was just immediately filled with adrenaline. You, you'd have been on edge and coming down off that. You, you're actually, it's it's an experience where you, you're exhausted and shattered from an emotional trauma where you nearly died and you wouldn't go to New Jersey and carry on and just, you know, oh, well, there's New Jersey. I mean, if it was somewhere major, like he had a massive event, he couldn't get out of it, but he just carried on like nothing happened and put a bandage on his ear. No way. No way. Plus the, 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 the wave of the bullet going past that far would blow out your ears. It'd be like being smacked across the side of the head and all the air forced in there. Right. Your equilibrium, your center of balance, here, your inner ear crystals, they'd all be affected by that. So I just, the whole thing is not true. What they're trying to tell us it is, is not it. So mm -hmm. whatever your interpretation is, whatever you feel about it as a viewer, I'm not saying you, John, mm -hmm. um, is up to you to pull it apart from what you feel that you can grab from what truthful part of it. I know what I think, but um, that's just my opinion. It's not even really worth sharing in it at all, but... It just drops us into exactly what's coming next, which is this chain of events leading up to the election and leading up into how our entire lives are about to change planetary-wise. Well, certainly in first world countries, and then it'll feed down to you know Africa and Asia. But maybe we should talk a little bit about that, John. You wanna you wanna bounce that around? Sure. Actually, I'm glad you brought that up because you know our audience will virtually crucify us if we don't get into some elements of the wealth transfer. So <clears throat> I think we need to also step, take a step back. And I have a question for you, which I'll get to in a second. We need to get back to the mechanics because some of the questions or the commentary that I see, not only on my channel, but in other communities, there's a cognitive dissonance disconnect, just like there was with the great, great reset versus the global currency reset. Mm -hmm. the, the bad guys, the cabal always use language finely manipulated to, to make you think they're one and the same, but in actuality, they're not. And words do matter. That being said, um, as there is a great reset, there's a global currency reset. There's a lot of talk about deletion of the three zeros in Iraq. That's not the same thing as the project to delete the three zeros. A deletion of three zeros is a lot. Like when they took the 50K note out of circulation, that's what the cabal wants. They, they don't care about that because that, they don't have to they can still money launder under those terms. They still work with the dollar. The project to delete the three zeros involves a heck of a lot more work, which we're seeing. Things like ascending to the WTO, passing all the important laws and tariffs, the oil and gas law, which will come at the end of this whole thing, as you will, we've discussed. Uh, then you have to work with the borders. You have to get the Kurds their proper oil revenues. You then have to return to the international stage and issue the smaller notes and coins like we did with the US many, many years ago. 
in order to become a truly revalued or reinstated currency as they've been here before. And that's what the cabal is fighting against because what you're seeing happen now, because they're, you're seeing, David, a, a wheat from the tares. You're seeing an extraction, extraction or separation like in peanut butter, the oil and the peanut butter separate or oil and water in a, in a yeah. vase or whatever, a, a salad dressing jar. You're seeing the separation of the, the evil and the good. It's Ephesians 6.12. It always is spiritual warfare, but you're seeing evil lose its power in good gain, but you're also seeing an extrapolation of the power from the West, like you said, to the East. So that's just an important thing I wanted to point out to you. Now, the yeah. question that I was getting from the audience that I want to address, because we get this all the time, and I told them I would address it, address it on today's show, so I'm going to keep my promise. Uh, Canadians always ask me what banks they should go to for the exchange, and Australians want to know. The Canadians I've researched, I have a better idea, but you're closer to it than I am, relatively speaking. What banks have you opined in Australia that Australians can go to for the reset? Well, that's quite it's quite a good question, this John, because we've been getting this for for years. Um the main biggest ones, really, and you've got to you've got to just use common sense because all right, in the States, for example, we've got um Wells Fargo. But um let's just have a look. I'm gonna have a little look. Australian sure. banks. Um, and we'll see how many banks there are there. But basically, I know they're all they're all kind of owned all by the same thing. There's um, one main major um, investment group owns all of them. So you got ANZ Bank, Commonwealth National, Australia Bank, and Westpac. I mean, they're the biggest four banks there. Um, if you want to go bigger than that, then you've got the Australian New Zealand Banking Corporation as well. That also takes us down there, but. I would say the top three are Commonwealth, National Australia, and Westpac, um, only because these yeah. are the ones that have got most of the um, most of the high street locations taken care of. Although mm. those are dwindling, they right. are they are dwindling at the moment. Less less and less banks are um, keeping the doors open because less and less people are using facilities such as bank and checks, and you know you can do everything online now. But there's certain key points that you need to look at as well. That we've seen Wells Fargo do this, transform the high street locations into what looks like strange little offices. So it would be interesting to see if there's any feedback from the Australian um, community about um, if they have transformed any of that. Mm -hmm. Now, there was a, a Chinese bank that went under last week as well, a very, very big one, yep. which was a, a surprise and not a surprise because, you know, China is going through a major change. I'm going to go back to your original question, but just before we forget, China's, the biggest problem there was when the, the real estate conglomerate um, collapsed and they that all ties into Evergreen, the shipping label, the brand, and then they've got this real estate branch as well. And I think real estate is going to be affected. I can see that happening in the U.S. as well because mortgages, um, are being affected by this uh, and foreclosures. See, a lot of people aren't earning the same sort of money as they're having anymore, and the cost of living is higher, so they can't afford payments on luxury items if they've got a second holiday home at the beach or in the mountains or something. And it, it always has a, a knock-on effect like that. So to, basically, in Australia, um, those are the top three, top four banks, and they're all kind of intertwined anyway. Mm -hmm. So I would imagine you'd see some sort of prepping for that. Um, so go and have a little look around, you know, and see if there, any of them are converting their branches into offices. And in, in Canada, you've got this, between six and 10, you've got the Royal Bank of Canada. Um, Scotia yep. Bank is one I remember. Um, again, the bank, the name of the, the name is not supported in the, in the bank. It's because who are they actually owned by? Because, the more or less one big conglomerate has several different banks on, under their umbrella, you know, like for example, Bank of America, weren't they just bought out by Wells Fargo or was it the other way around? Wells Fargo, some... I think bought them out a couple of years ago. Yeah. So although it's called Bank of America, it's really owned by another, another banking corporation there. So use your common sense, have a little look, are they stable? Are the cash machines working? Are the, are the facilities still looking in good condition? Because, I've noticed in some of the banks in the UK when I go there, as I'm walking past, you'll see one of the, the ATMs. It just looks really grubby and dirty and like it hasn't been serviced for a while. Mm. But And it could change. You know, it, it could also change. We're talking about doing the exchanges in high street banks, but to keep people on 
the edge. You know, you can't have this information leaking out too early because people will start making, um, they'll try to be scamming people out of it. Oh, yeah, you know, send me your registration numbers, send us your serial numbers. Oh, I'm now exchanging. Yeah, we set up our own group. Just send me your bank notes. We'll send you the money. Yeah, Use your common that. sense. Like yeah. you, you said, John, walk in there with a smaller denomination and say, okay, can you change this for me and see how it all goes? And then say, okay, listen, I might have a little bit more. Maybe I've got some more. I'll come back tomorrow. I'll come back next week. Well, you take one note at a time, like we said, right? And build a relationship. That's yeah. the whole key. And you remember a year ago, David, speaking of the banks being transformed into wealth management centers when I sent you my local Wells Fargo here in California yeah. over a year ago, they had it in place. You remember that I showed you real footage um yeah. so yeah just you know take your time don't be in a rush don't uh, if they put sanctions on the dinar and some banks don't recognize it don't panic that may go on for one to three weeks and then it, the sanctions will be lifted because you'll like you said there'll be these these con artists coming out hey the banks will take your money don't worry we'll do it for you always yeah. be concerned when somebody says though to just call 1-800, send us all your bank notes, and we'll be clean, <laughs> believe you. <laughs> Just call 1-800, no bull but us. <laughs> yeah, 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 please. We, to, uh, you know, push one if you want to be ripped off. For two, <laughs> you want to be ripped off in Spanish. Right? <laughs> we tell it like it ain't, and that's no bull. <laughs> yeah, I mean, it's exactly how it could go. There's always people trying to scam people out of this, you know. I still get messages from people asking me, um, is it which serial number notes? What about the old Iraqi D now? What about the Dong? Where can I get some? So use your common sense, guys, because you should be pretty much in tune with it now, your spider senses. But, right. but I think we're getting really close because of like all, all the BRICS well, communities coming together. They're forming their own, um, their own, what do you call it, government now that we're all getting meetings. Well, they have their own currency within the BRICS. Yeah. 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 We have three incontrovertible facts, David, that we need to look at that's very important for the, both sides of our audience to, to understand, right? Not opinions, facts. In September, the Fed is going to start doing rate cuts. Initially, they said three. They capitulated and said one, but they've always had an intention to do multiple. They always lie. They do the opposite of whatever they say. We know this. So now they're going back and revealing because they don't have a war cover story. They have to now disclose it. Um, no, we're going to do three rate cuts, September, October, November, right? That's one. Two, Iraq is going to be completely digitized on the new asset-backed platform um, by September. That's fact. That's another reason Maliki's panicking, because he knows his time is up. We're getting close, like you said, and we are. And three, Judge Torres has now announced that she has till September to render a decision for XRP. This morning, it just came out, perfect timing for our podcast, uh, Brad Garlinghouse, the CEO of Ripple, everybody knows by now, has said that he's looking to see if they're going to give him a decision at the end of this month. So that would tell me sometime between the end of this month, next week, and, you know, who knows, first, second week of September as a back wall for XRP to, you know, go in, uh, for XRP to win the case. And what a coincidence, China's just announced that they are taking sanctions and bans off of cryptos by September. So they're telling you what's happening. And we're at the end of a 16-year cycle. Iraq hasn't been in the WTO in 16 years. You know the countries copy each other, David. We said that and we proved it yeah. multiple times. What a coincidence. 16 years ago was when Obama slash Sortero was put in, right? And mm -hmm. now that regime is being exited out. And again, you're seeing the shift of power from the evil to the good. And the BRICS have a big meeting in October with 100... Uh, nations there, which comprises, I think, roughly 70 to 80 percent of the world's population. You'll have China and India. Those are big powerhouses right there. It's roughly three billion right there. So um, you can see that everything is amalgamating away from the old system, and it's just going to get quicker and quicker. So I have a friend at Schwab who's very high up. He told me that he sees we're in the melt up for those who are in the financial world. We'll know what that means. And then the bust will happen this year, right? Then you have Trump telling you that we're going to, this is key, I want the audience to hear this, and then I'll turn it over to you. You have Trump telling you, we're going to have the biggest celebration in American history from Memorial Day, May of 2025, through 4th of July of 26. That tells me that the crash is, the, the, it'll start this year, but the complete disintegration will be April, right? Which means we have a Super Bowl run cycle of the cryptos from October to March. We have a six-month window to eat, eat up and collect the nets. 
he's going to drop it in April. And then what a coincidence, a month later, we're going to be celebrating. That's Nasara, that's debt forgiveness, that's drilling for oil, that's auditing the Fed, that's bringing Judy Shelton for the gold standard. All things he's already done. I've shown you the IRS documents. The Treasury has now absorbed the Fed. You know, so he's already, he can say that because it's already been done behind the scenes years ago. Yeah, I, it, it, again, look for the signs. I'll, I'll tell you one sign that um, I notice. I do a lot of bank transfers. I'll do two or three a day, John. It's just easier. Mm -hmm. um, I have uh, staff and bills and various different things. Nothing, nothing spectacular. But when I go on to do my online banking and I say, right, transfer, it says SWIFT is no longer available. Okay, so you just push OK, and it goes into the different system. And once you push the amount, the person, you say, OK, send, and it does the passcodes or whatever you, your security mm -hmm. is, it's gone. But the money is there in seconds. And I can transfer to any country in Europe. Um, the U.S. takes a little bit longer, but we're all getting instant transfers now. So the cabal are not what I would use the word as kiting, which was basically... In the old days, you'd make a transfer, $1,000. It would take three days to get there, three business days. But, okay, so where does it go for those three days? Of course, it goes into a holding bank, and then the holding bank will then forward it on to the receiving bank. But in the meantime, if imagine if they've got a 25,000 transactions like that. They can use this money for a couple of days, and if it happens over a weekend, even better. So what they're doing is... They're taking all that money, they're leveraging it and putting it something in a some sort of fund or a stock market investment. They're all trained how to do it. And then it finally gets to the end destination. Well, that particular form of scamming is what I would call it. They're using other people's money to make their money themselves uh, has stopped now because you get instant banking transfers. And I'm not sure, do you, do you have that in the States yet? If you were to send somebody on the East Coast money, John, would they get it instantly if it was a different bank? Yeah, yeah, we have Zelle and all that kind of stuff. But that it's again is in the US as well. Right. That again is the removal of the SWIFT system and, and the QFS. That's they're again transitioning over top of each other. That's why you're seeing that that move. And XRP is plays a big part in that. Yeah. So but people are gonna have to use an electronic currency because um it's the logical way forward. So which ones do you choose? You know, Bitcoin went up, it went down. Do you see what happened when Trump was shot? It went like that. And then when they announced he's not dead, it went up like this. You know, they're, they're so volatile, these. And, you know, you can't take chances. Like, if you send anything with Bitcoin these days, you're either going to lose money or make money on it. So that's it. So, well, we agree a deal on $5,000, um, but I'll send you in Bitcoin. And it's okay. So he doesn't do it for a couple of hours. You think, well, hang on. It's gone down $300 now. So I'm out 300 bucks by the time. And that you can't do that when you're in multiple million dollar transactions for oil tankers full of crude coming out of the Straits of Hormuz moving through Singapore. And it takes six weeks for them to get, you know, you can't, you can't take chances like that. So you need a stable payment facility and now that Saudi Arabia have not re-signed that deal back in June, they were supposed to re-sign that mm -hmm. petrol dollar. They haven't signed it. They're not going to do it. They're going to do it in their own currency. Right. So all of these massive, massive marker stones that the mainstream media are not making the average person in the street aware of. You know, I go outside and find somebody. Well, I don't know. I don't know anything about it. You know, petrol. No, I don't. They, they just think life is carrying on and everything is going to be peachy and rosy. Yep. But um, this is where shows like what we do and on other shows that we listen to, John, are very important to tune people into what's going on in the world. So this is why would you recommend Brexit... people? Go I'm on. sorry, go sorry. ahead. No, please go ahead. I was going to say what would be, judging by what we've witnessed in the last 30 days since we've had a, a previous chat, what would be your recommendations? Well, before I do that, let's go back to address your very important point, because I don't want to gloss over that, which is exactly to your point why BRICS is forming a common core currency based on real assets. Like Bill, yeah. Holter, Bill Holter always says, something real for something real. No more BS, no more debt, no more any of that. Like, you've got to show your wares. That's part of the new asset-backed digital economic reality is everything is out in the open. It can't be and Federal Reserve and money laundering and all the pedophilia and all that stuff is that's going to get exposed too. 
yeah. this year into next year, which is a really a good thing. Um, as far as my recommendations, I just first of all say, as always, I'm not a financial advisor. This is not construed as financial advice. I'm just giving and sharing information at the best possible level. That disclaimer in mind, um, I'd say be diversified. Get, have your foreign currencies, have your precious metals, have, uh, you know, look into oil, certain oil stocks. I can't get into all of them today when I have the time. Look at um, the right cryptos, asset backed ISO 20022. Some examples would be XRP, LX, OM, XDC, and many, many others. I uh, would be looking at land and water sources. Look for land that has natural resources on it. If you have an oil and natural gas on there as a means to becoming self-sufficient, have cash on hand, have, um, have a five-gallon gas tank of fresh, fresh fuel for this time when, when the electronic system goes down for however many days it is. Have flashlights, have batteries, um, candles, things of that nature, just, you know, food and water, just common sense things, do the best you can and be prepared, but be diversified across the board as much as you can. This wealth transfer, as we've said before, is eight levels deep. So yeah. if you just want to dip your foot in the proverbial pool with your toe, okay, that's fine. But there are other people here who want to take advantage of the full breadth and depth. And so educate yourself about the aspect. I guarantee you, David, there's people who have owned stocks and bonds who research this stuff with an inch of their life. But for some reason, when it comes to foreign currencies, oh, just throw it in a shoebox and forget about it and wait till it happens. No, you've got to know the countries you're investing in and be as educated in that as you do the bonds and stocks. Why? Because it's common sense. And the, the rate of return on these currencies is far greater than any stock or bond you're ever going to get unless it's you have you know an infinite supply. Well, we're talking about this particular worldwide event of the reset, though. This is not something that's been going on for years, so don't get the wrong idea, folks. We're not saying if you went on vacation to um, Venezuela back in the 50s and then you took your money in there now, or Cuba right. or someone like that. Actually, Cuba's another one where the banks are out of money. They woke up and all their savings were gone last week. Did you hear about that? I did. I did, yep. Cuba, yeah. another country. So what I've learned this week is... You've got to understand that people, it's very easy to become complacent. Mm -hmm. You know, you come home, you switch the button on and the lights go on. You come home, you switch uh, another button and the microwave's on. Or you open the fridge and there's food in there and you start eating. But you, you've got to understand what it's like to take away these, you know. It's a, a great example is you get in the car in the morning and the, the battery's dead, car won't go. And then all of a sudden, your, your whole morning or your whole life of what you've got planned that day is going to change because all of a sudden your car doesn't start. All of a sudden, your, your debit card doesn't work because there's a power outage. So yeah. what are you going to do? So I'll tell you a few things that I've got. As I always I always have cash. I uh, I pay for things as much as I can with cash, trying to keep that going. Um, I have, um, let me think now, about 18 or 20 maybe a bit more, 20 days of military rations. Mm -hmm. These MRE, the MRE bags that they give the military, I got those from a friend of mine at the base. I've got, let's say, 21 days worth of, I can go anywhere, get them in the car, I can go anywhere. I've got um, about 120 liters of mixed fuel between diesel and gasoline. I've got XRP. I mean, I haven't got 100,000 dollars in xrp but you, you know i'm not saying put all you all of the stakes in that i've got my foreign currencies that we've been talking about um i have starlink satellite system i've got a property that there's fresh water on the on the on the property and i've got my own um electrical panels on the roof so i am prepared for it my favorite seeing so hard to keep that down and legally, they're just running out of all these different um, false accusations about why it shouldn't be made fully legal into a full currency, uh, asset-backed, and people will use it. We know that there's several countries that have already said, we're going to take out XRP, we're going to use Ripple. We're doing it. So that's probably my personal favorite. Again, I'm not a, an investment expert. I'm not telling you to do what I've done. All I'm doing is saying, we walk the walk and we talk the talk. So we're not just sitting here saying, you know, other sides of the, the world together, not doing what we say we're going to be doing. And then sorry, go ahead. I think medical, this is somewhere people often overlook. Think about what medical things that you'll need, because if you're a, an insulin user, you need to get, you know, 
try to get a little bit more and just stash a little bit more reduce your insulin just put a little bit away there if you need about four five ten days worth of your medical uh, supplies that you need as well whether it's something simple from um, painkillers and band-aids right up to your prescription meds it sh you should consider that as well i mm -hmm. have antibiotics all over the place and i travel with them as well so i've got something that'll take everything from here to here and then from below for your belly button if you're ever in um, any infections inside there so just be prepared but what we're talking about today is we've shown you that events can change very very quickly look what happened this week massive uh cyber attack it wasn't an accident this is just getting you warmed up this was a test to see how bad it can get you know and then you got some organized nutter on a roof shooting at trump but you know trump was it an act of God that he escaped the bullet or not? I don't know. I'm just saying I don't believe the optics of what they're showing us. But things can change very rapidly, and you've got to be in a position to move quickly and protect yourselves, so like, and to relax, not be worried about, oh, my God, am I going to wake up tomorrow? Because let's face it, everybody's money's kept in a digital location in a bank now. If you pick up your phone or your laptop and you can't connect to it, you can't, you can't do anything. You can't do anything. Yes, and a, and a couple of things, David, I want to point out before we close is one, the last couple of days for those who are watching cryptos, XRP and XLM had a huge private buyer buy out a bunch of it. Why would they be doing that? They must know something's coming with this case and some inside information got in to get ahead of it. We can speculate on who that is, but somebody, a big whale just bought a bunch. So there's a big clue right there. Um, can you quickly show the uh, the video and the uh, stuff I sent you? Because I want people to see this, to your point about yeah. the shooting and President Trump. Let me see which one you're talking about. You want to talk about, uh, I know which one. We'll start with the start with the card and then we can show the video because that's pretty quick. Yeah, yeah, Please. yeah. Let's bring that up. Um, this one. Yeah, this is weird because... This goes back about 18 years, this weird card game. And then this popped up. But John, you talk them through it. Well, this actually came out in 1995, 29 years ago. There's an Illuminati card that came out, showed Princess Diana's death before it occurred. And it showed President Trump's assassination attempt uh, with the same face that he made when he got up shaking his fist about fight, fight, fight. Simpsons, I think close to 20 years ago, had a, an episode that depicted the exact same thing. So you just have to put pieces together and go, well, how did they know this way ahead of time unless this whole thing was planned out, which you can see that it was. Yeah, I agree. I mean, there's two, uh, the Simpsons are a great example of that. I mean, the, it must be 20 or 30 different predictions that they've had in that one that's been brought mm -hmm. up. So, you know, him coming down the escalator in the right. golden building. That's just one of them. You know, Lisa's dressed up like um, like Hillary Clinton. Let's exactly. see why this one won't. The, the video I'll walk through real quick while you're queuing it up. This is a video that came from one of our team members, uh, Judy, who helps me with the presentations I do with Benny Amin. And it's a brilliant find. And I put it on our Telegram. So those of you on the Telegram have already seen this. This is for those of you who have not. And we highly, humbly, humbly recommend you join Telegram so you can see all this stuff in real time. But so video came on Fox News about, I think, a day and a half ago, Harris Faulkner, one of the key correspondents there, um, talking about the whole shooting incident. And pay close attention to what she says about sitting president. She didn't change her language. She didn't. It wasn't a faux pas. It, she said it very fluidly in motion, like it was understood knowledge. Yeah, like uh, what you don't know. <laughs> yeah, right. Um, we have just learned that the Trump rally shooter Thomas Crook's parents were looking for him in the hours leading up to the shooting. We're now told they eventually called law enforcement to report that Crooks was missing and they were worried and they also were told those parents uh, are now being cooperative now with authorities but they gave them the heads up that something's going on with our son we are worried we don't know the texture or the details of their concerns so in other words well were they worried that he had a gun were they worried you know what were they worried about were they worried that he was going to try to a, a, attempt to kill a sitting president and then go ahead and assassin turn into an assassin and 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 kill 
another person and injure two others? It was an attempted assassination on Trump, but he managed to murder anyway. Are, are, are we talking about that? What were they giving the cops a heads up about? This is the first time we are hearing this. We'll stay on the story and we will bring you the details, updates as we get them. Crook's parents were looking for him hours ahead of the assassination. Yeah. A sitting, I mean, a sitting I president. Guess. She said it right there. Yeah, yeah. How, sitting how president. <laughs> well, it's he can, it's obvious to us, John. I mean, yeah. we're um, we're flying all over the he, the way he rolls around America. It's quite obvious that he is the president. Right. I'm just saying the the fake media now is being forced to give out little vignettes of truth that they didn't do before. You know, yeah, and, and she didn't stop and say, "Oh, I mean, uh, President Biden." She didn't say that. She, you know, no. she kept it in motion. The sitting president, and most people have got the common sense to understand that as well. John, is there anything we haven't covered on this show? No, I think we unloaded the ball pretty well, brother. <laughs> All right, what a week it's been! What a week it's been! What a month it's been! You know, I'm looking forward to getting closer and closer because, you know, as we get into the election months, this. This really all has to culminate and um, and come to a head because all of this chess maneuvering that everybody's doing, we're all trying to guess what's going on politically. When is it going to happen? It all has to more or less happen. We're right at the end. It's, it looks like it's going to be the last innings where all of this um, interesting stuff is going to happen. So yeah. I'm excited for the next six months. But really, I just want to get to the end as well. I'm enjoying this journey, but I, I, I want to get to the destination and enjoy the beach resort after this long hike across the, the mountains, John. It's just, just been a little bit too long, but I have enjoyed it. Agreed. Yeah, I agree, but I'm also looking forward to taking a vacation and making sure God's people are blessed and getting people the relief they need so we can all do what we were put on this planet to do by God, which are our talents, not being a slave to their system. Yeah. That's it. How many times have you say Pete? You've heard people say, "I hate my job," and I wish I could. My life has changed. You know, mm -hmm. I'm very, very blessed. Now it's not a day that goes by I don't say thank you for that. You know, I, I do what I love, and I love what I do. And it seems to be the niche that I've been put into, and I, I'm very blessed for it. Getting to see so much and hear so much and talk to some amazing people around the world. When all this, this is said and done, we look back over the years, John, and the people that we've interviewed and. It's going to be one of those moments say, hey, I told you so. I told you so when all of this was coming true. So people said, yeah, yeah, whatever. Mm -hmm. Look, where are these people now? Where are all these screamers mm -hmm. saying, put your mask on? Where are all the people saying, you can't come in this restaurant because you're not being vaccinated? I mean, you know, it's all disappeared. And they're not here anymore. They're all like hiding. Have you noticed, David? Also, I agree. Have you noticed there's an uptick like on YouTube if you're watching a, a whatever video, whatever you're watching, the ads come on, you're seeing an uptick in, in stuff about suicides and therapy. Mental yeah. therapy, that was talked yeah, yeah. about years ago. Now we're at that place, sadly. Yeah, yeah. there's there's a lot of mental issues going on because yeah, the small problem, it's not a small problem, but things like homeless, the homeless numbers are just oh. like skyrocketing. I mean, it's ridiculous. But then they've lost $7 billion that they sent to the Ukraine by accident. Ah, we overpaid you by $7 billion. Any chance you can send it back? No, we don't know <laughs> what you're talking about. <laughs> right. All right, John, so... Let's have a little chat. Where where can people see what you're doing? Your re recordings, your Telegram pages, and sure. Well, I mean, again, you can look me up on um, on Telegram. We have a channel called My Name and, and Club Patriot. Uh, you can find my find my name on uh, uh, YouTube, Chris Real World. That's my business partner and myself. Uh, same on Rumble, My Name and BitChute. And then we do have a. Uh, a membership, a free side and a, and a paid membership side called uh, clubpatriot.com, which I recommend people check out. We're building a really nice database of, so it'll be like Discord on the free side where people can just talk and share information and, you know, whatever recipes and home solutions, you know, for whatever HCQ, if they're trying to make their own, you know, natural HCQ or they've got a, a recipe or whatever it is. And then there's a business side if people want to network with business owners form partnerships, alliances, or if they've got a patent that they want to put out, or if you're looking to get your kids out of the public school system, which when I have my guardians, that's, I'm going to be homeschooling them. And so you're getting out of that matrix, there's an educational system that can help you, you know, wean away from that. So 
the Club Patriot website has a lot of advantages to it for all these different things. I haven't even scratched the surface, but that's something I would recommend people check out as well, just to at least have a free visit. Um, what about you? Where can people find your stuff? Well, all my health stuff there is healthwellforyou.com for any of the parasite and the ivermectin and hydroxychloroquine. You can find it all there. Some of the medical stuff that I've developed is fantastic. I've got an office full of it. It's all over the place. <laughs> and uh, yeah, I'm on BitChute as well. You can find me. Just look up DW uh, Pro, is it? And David G. Mahoney, you'll find me there. Most people know where I am. And I'll be back, I suppose, in about three, four weeks. We'll do another one, John. Let's see what the next month holds for us. Let's see who's going to be a uh, shot at, what banks are going to go under, what countries are going to be um, changing, what presidents are going to be retiring, what uh, prime ministers are going to be changing as well. A lot of political movement going on around the world, so we'll follow it and tell you all about it on next month's show. Great to see you, John. Take care in the meantime, buddy. You too, Stay David. out of trouble. Over I'll there. try. <laughs> God bless, brother. Bye, guys.